Hello everyone, Vera here, and welcome to Dearest Models, where I'll be looking at previous model projects in detail. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the show. Over the years, I've actually had four incarnations of Stepney. I did want a Hornby Thomas one, but as you'd expect, the price went up and that didn't happen. The first one I had was just a dapper one in improved engine green, with the bunker and a spare Hornby Stepney face bought off a friend. It wasn't a great runner and it was very loud, but I didn't really have any other options, so I just had to make do. Up next came a Hornby one. But this one was from that limited edition Blue Bell Railway pack that came with the blue coach. Now I actually bought this on a visit to the Blue Bell Railway, but at the time I couldn't actually afford the complete pack. So thankfully they actually did sell the pack in separate pieces, so I just bought the local on its own. This one was a much better runner than the Dapo model, but it was still very high pitched when running. The Dapo and Hornby models both had removable smoke box doors, so during the time that I had them I would just continually swap which one had the face and which had the smoke box door. Fast forward a few years and Hornby brought out the new tooling terriers, so I decided to go for one with a BR livery to represent the terriers that ran on the Hailing Island branch. At the time they only did one in BR with the right bunker that I wanted, so I ended up getting that one, and that just happened to be Stepney, so that was purely coincidental. This one I actually got while on holiday with some friends at the South Devon Railway for their 50th anniversary gala. Once I got home, I gave him three link couplings, head code discs, and just fitted all the details. Now, the final Stepney came about by chance. Like many, I suspect, I was disappointed that Hornby didn't actually make Stepney in A1X condition in the improved engine green, and I'd seen a fair few people get around this by getting the Collectors Club model of Brighton Works. Initially I didn't want to do this and decided I would wait for their New Year announcements. However, I caved before then, when I was looking for just a, a new pretty little tank engine, deciding on Brighton Works as the cheaper option. You can imagine my disappointment when I found them to be completely out of stock by the time I decided this, so I resigned to fate once more. But not for long! Another friend was visiting the Seven Valley Railway for the day, and of course made the pilgrimage to footplate models, and they sent photos of all the cabinets and the displays and stuff into a Discord server, making all the people jealous of course. But then, the target was sighted. By pure chance, a Brighton Works was sitting in one of the cabinets. And basically this describes my reaction. It sparkles and shimmers, it shines and delights. I must get it for my best. By the time I'd spotted this, the friend had left the shop and was on their way home, so I couldn't really send them any money to get it for me. And it wasn't actually listed on Footplate's website either, as far as I could see. So on the off chance I sent an email into them inquiring about it and they kindly pointed me in the direction to where it was listed on the website and I snapped it up straight away. My next dilemma was what to actually do with it. I had two ideas in mind, the first being Stepney and the second one was giving it BR crests to create a station pilot livery, something like what the J72s had. Obviously I went with Stepney, and so tracking down some transfers was going to be necessary. Thankfully someone pointed me in the direction of Precision Labels, who make a set for Stepney's current guys. I did ask about the older style from the 60s livery, but they didn't really have those. When the transfers arrived, I got right to work. Using some tea cut on a cotton bud, I gently rubbed away the old number and the Brighton Works lettering from both sides. Next, the bunker was hand painted black using Windsor and Newton acrylic. Then when the new transfers arrived, they were added on, being sealed in with Halford Clear lacquer spray. 
A rear coal was added to the bunker, along with some Smith screw link couplings, finishing off with tail lamp and southern head coat discs. The last thing I was stuck on was a face for him. Pretty much all the options I had available to me were too big for him, but there was one potential candidate, capsule plow rail. But these are not very common to come by, so I messaged a guy on eBay that I've used before to help me track one down. I forget their name, but if the windup is hard to find, he can track it down. He's a little bit more expensive, but he's never failed me before. It took some time for the wind-up to arrive, and in the meantime, I had my first experience with dry ice, and as you can see, I had a good deal of fun with that. When the face did arrive, it was a near-perfect fit, being ever so slightly too big, meaning that once the smoke box dart had been removed and the smoke box door filed down, I had to remove the front handrail to get the perfect fit. The only other thing of note is that I did actually try running Stepney with Duck, but unfortunately my Duck has a stay alive, so he's a lot slower, so they don't really run that well together. That basically rounds up Stepney. He is honestly such a beautiful model and without a doubt one of my favourites. Thomas was impatient. Why are we waiting? My passengers are being delayed. Sorry, Thomas, said his driver. We're being shunted to allow another train to pass. Soon, they heard an unfamiliar puffing sound. There was Stepney with headlamps swaying and whistle blowing. He gathered speed and disappeared. Well, bust my boiler, said Thomas the tank engine. Well, that's about it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for giving it a watch, and if you want to, you can check out my Twitter. I'll put the link in the description below. And I'll see you next time. Bye.